Welcome to Talking Heads, a project of the Africa Center based in Cape Town. Each week, we bring you the experts, mavericks, and the thought leaders who are demanding we think differently about who and what it means to be African. A Nigerian friend of mine once joked that she could only hold her boyfriend's hand if they were walking down a street in London. Doing it in Lagos seemed unthinkable to her. The issue of sexual conservatism in Africa is nuanced and complex. That said, and while it may be the same in several other cultures, public displays of affection, I love you. sex and talking about sex, especially by women, are largely taboo among certain African communities and cultures. Reasons for this range from the stronghold of patriarchy and what is and is not appropriate and respectable female behavior to the far-reaching impact of colonialism. The people of Africa are doing excellent work to help the Allied cause. And ideas of sex and sexuality that can be traced to Western Christianity. Sexual life then mostly becomes something hidden, shrouded in marriage or denied altogether. And despite organizations and communities of people who think differently, a fierce conservatism seems to dominate, often to the detriment of our health, when you consider the scourge of AIDS and HIV, and equally unacceptable, to the detriment of our fulfillment, our knowledge of ourselves and our bodies, what feels good and why. Nana Sekiyama Dakua is a feminist writer and blogger. She's also the communication specialist for the African Women's Development Fund. In 2009, frustrated by the absence of safe spaces where women could discuss their sexual lives, Nana, along with a close friend Malaka, launched a blog entitled Adventures from the Bedrooms of African Women. I am Yoandi Omotosho, and today I'm talking with Nana Dakua. Nana, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Yewande. You started the blog almost five years ago. What specifically made you decide to do this? Well, I started the blog after going on a girl's holiday. We were on a lovely beach in the western region of Ghana. We just spent our days sunning ourselves, evenings drinking cocktails and having all sorts of conversation. And most innovatively, our conversation would always come back to sex. And we were just so honest and shared with each other all our questions, all our thoughts, all our anxieties, all our fantasies. And it just felt to me like the very first time where I had been with a group of African women. And I was in a space where I was able to have a really frank and open conversation about sex and sexuality without wondering if anybody was judging me or looking at me like, oh, you're a bad girl. And for me, that was just a revelation because it made me aware of how little I had actually been able to speak openly about sex. And so when I came back from the holiday, I thought, I definitely want to do something about this. And at the time, I started blogging quite recently. So I spoke to one of my best friends in the States, Malaika, and I said, look, I just had this amazing experience. I think we should start a blog and talk about African women and sexuality. And she was like, really? It's funny you should say this. I've been thinking about writing a book, which is all about the crazy things African women end up getting up to in the bedroom. And really, we just thought, okay, why don't we merge our two ideas together and start a blog? I mean, and you touch on it, and I'm generalizing, but a lot of the African continent is very conservative when it comes to something like this. You know, it's risque to talk about sex. It's taboo, uh, particularly for women. So one can easily get slut-shamed if you're seen doing it. Well, yes, you're absolutely right when you say the continent is overall generally conservative. Um, women get slut-shamed a lot, um, just not on the continent, but globally. I'm a very impulsive person, and I'm one of those people, when I decide to do something, I just sort of jump in <laughs> without really thinking a lot. And that's the approach which I took. I did have a sort of fleeting thought, oh my gosh, you know, pastors are going to preach against me in the churches. Mm -hmm. People are going to write articles criticizing me. But what Adventures has shown me is that sometimes I fear of a particular type of consequence is actually bigger than the possibility of that actually happening. Because I haven't been criticized at all. In fact, what I've really had is a lot of affirmation from women and men who say, wow, Adventures is such a great space. Last year, 
Adventures One Best Overall Blog. And for me, that was really, really important, especially the fact that we won Best Activist Blog, because I thought, wow, I didn't realize how many people actually got it. That, yes, this is a blog where we talk openly about sex. This is a blog where we also share erotic stories. But this is a blog which is primarily about activism, about saying that women's sexuality is important, about saying pleasure is political. How do your parents feel about that this is your blog and that you started it? Was it an issue for them? My parents do not read the blog. They don't approve per se because they think it's risky to put so much of my personal stuff online. They are concerned about possible repercussions in the future, especially because they know the kind of person I am and they think I could also have a potential future in public leadership. So they're concerned about all of that. But at the same time, when I won the blog award and I actually got some money for it, they were like, yay, take us the money with your award winners. I wanted you to talk a bit about why this is so important. And it is important. You get between 40,000 and 100,000 hits a month. I think it's important for a variety of reasons. First of all, anything that you try and keep hidden and make it secret naturally makes people a lot more curious. And at least for myself growing up and for a lot of Ghanaians I know growing up and also for my conversations with people from other African countries who've had similar experiences, sex was never really something that was spoken about. And I think sex also has a psychological impact on people, whether you've been sexually abused, whether you become promiscuous. It has an impact on your psyche, it has an impact on your health, it has an impact on the way you relate to people. So it's so important, it's a central part of our lives, it's how we came into being, you know, it's what a lot of people find pleasurable, and yet somehow it's a taboo subject. In lieu of the recent laws being passed in Uganda and in Nigeria, bearing in mind anything other than male-female relationships are illegal in 38 African countries, what role does Adventures play at such a time? So actually a few days ago, one of the posts that we shared was from an anonymous blogger from Nigeria who wrote about her same-sex relationship as a young girl in Kaduna, northern Nigeria. What you want to show at a point like this is, hey these stories exist. What's next for Adventures? Well, a big thing this year is every single month we're going to have a hangout. It will be streamed live. It will also be recorded and posted online. Our guests and resource people can choose to either be anonymous or not. This month actually was our very first hangout. It was on reconciling sex with our scene. So we're looking at religion and how it affects and influences our sex and our sexuality. And it was great. The feedback from that has been great. We really applaud you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And I mean, I, just to say that sometimes I feel like I get a lot of maybe unfair recognition from adventures because, yes, in many ways, I have been the main person in the CN wheel, but I also have a co-blogger, Malaika. I also have a group of contributors who are very regular. There's Nina Marcia, there's Ikuba, there's Voluptuous Voltarian, there's African Mummy, and, you know, they don't, because a lot of them are anonymous, they don't really get the recognition they deserve, but they put so much into the blog. And in a sense, they get nothing for it because they don't even get any recognition. So I also just want to use this opportunity to thank all the countless African women who have sent in stories. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Nana. Thank you, Yawande. It's been an absolute pleasure. To find out more about Nana Dakua and to listen to other podcasts, visit www.talkingheads.org.za.